Okay, 1 Kings chapter 14, 21. And Rehoboam, that's the son of uh, Solomon, Judah. The son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 40 and 1 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord did choose out of all the tribes of Israel that put his name there. And his mother's name was Namath and Ammonite. Ammonite. Those are the children of Lot. And Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the whole nation. Judah is just carrying on what Solomon left off. And they provoked him to jealousy. We got a jealous God. We got a holy God that when you give someone else his time, his love, his care, his worship, he becomes jealous. With their sins which they have committed. Above all that their fathers have done. So they're getting worse and worse. Evolution. It's not getting better and better. It's getting worse and worse. What their father's done, they've done worse. For they also built them high places. So what their fathers built high places, their children have built even more high places. And images. You say, what's an image? A perfect image is, if you were to find a Bible today, open it up, you see a picture of Jesus. That's an image. Uh, a picture of Paul baptizing or preaching on a mountain or something, or Moses on a mountain carrying the Ten Commandments. That's an image. There were no photographs back then, yet people tried to draw them. You worship the image. And then when we get to heaven, you see all these religious pictures. You're going to be quite shocked to see they probably did not look like that. And groves, again, that's a trees, bushes, with a statue in the middle. On every high hill, get closer to God. Worship in the meadows. And under every green tree. So there's your tree huggers. There's your people who oh, love a tree. There's your not your, your you know, the, the druids where they worship trees. Here it is. Nothing new under the sun. You gotta save these trees. You can't kill the tree. You know, it's your property, but you can't cut the tree down. Here it is. Oh, here's a tree that we give to God. And there were also that's the first time sodomites. First time sodomites is mentioned. So, <clears throat> excuse me. What do you get when you get religion, false religion? You get sodomites. And there is one particular church you're having trouble with their priests and little boys. That's sodomites. And they have groves. They have high hills. They got images. And they got high places. The next thing that follows is Sodom. In the land. That's the land of Israel. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations. Alright, so Sodom and the high places, the images, and the groves, and the high hills, and the trees. That's a nation. That's a Gentile thing. And the Jews have carried over what the Gentiles were doing. Paul said to the Gentiles, he said, you had dumb idols. I don't mean they're stupid. That means they, they can't hear. They can't talk. Same thing here. Which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And remember when God told them to go in the land. You're supposed to get rid of it all. They didn't. They kept them. And they keep the thing. Solomon married by uh, multilingual women. And all kinds of women. And he adopted all their gods. So you got a mess. And it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. My people, they're getting worse and worse and worse. I am their father. They are my children. Hebrews 12 or 13 says discipline. I got to correct them. I got to pull their, their, their britches down and I got to punish them. I got to use the rod against them. And that's what uh, Shishak would be. That's what Babylon would be. That would be what the uh, Amalekites, that would be Assyria. When they come in, you say, why is this happening? Because we just learned they're doing religious things. They're, they're making God jealous. They're making him angry. So, all right, come here. Give me a ruler. 
I got a job for you. What's that? I want you to go with my people and I want you to punish them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. That whole thing is because Judah has gone above and far beyond the cup being filled. It's overfilled. It's just wicked. And God said, just destroy it all. On top of that, there will be no more king on that throne in Judah until Jesus Christ shows up. That's how angry God gets. And we need to realize, and I need to be very careful with this, because there are three modes. Sometimes trouble in our life, sometimes trouble in our life, maybe God getting a rod out after us. Because we are the children of God. He is our Father by, by Jesus Christ, by the Holy Spirit. And he says, listen, if I don't correct you, you're not my child. You're a bastard. Hebrews. So sometimes the events in our life can be correction. Sometimes in our life, like Job, it could be Satan. Job 1 and 2. Let me at him. You might be doing well. You might be doing good. And Satan says, well, let me at him. I'll show you how well he'll do. I'll show you how good he does. And then number three, it could be your own trouble. You want to involve yourself in sins and drinking and smoking and carousing and everything like that. And well, don't don't blame God and don't blame the devil when, when tragedies happen. Here Israel can say it's our fault. God had nothing to do with it. Satan had something to do with it. But they worship religion. And God said, Okay, time to correct. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. So he goes right into that house of the Lord. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. The gold, the silver. And the treasures of the king's house. He walks up into the king's house and says, that's mine. That's mine. That's mine. That I'm using that is mine purposely. We'll look at that in a moment. He even took all, he took away all. And he took away all the shields of gold, that's 1 Kings 10, 16, which Solomon had made. That's mine. And now you say, Sally, why are you saying that's mine? That's mine. Exodus 3, 22. It's his. Exodus 3, 22. They're coming, they're going to be coming out of Egypt. And God tells Moses something particular in 3, 22. God already knew Israel was going to fail. And it says 3.22, But every woman shall borrow, borrow of her neighbor. It didn't take. It's not yours. When you borrow something, can I borrow something? You return back what you borrow. Now, all these years, and let's see, the dates are 951 and 1400. It's 300 years later. Approximately, you know, just very rough drought. Shishak, king of Egypt, comes back and says, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. You borrow that, you borrow that silver, you borrow that gold, you borrow that brass, that's mine. Thank you. Israel lost. It didn't say they get to keep it, it says they borrowed. That's an important word. Because when you open up the modern Bibles, it says, but something like this, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor. So then Shishak would be coming and stealing, and he's not stealing. He's, he's showing up, like I said, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. Just getting back what I, what I got. And wouldn't it be weird, wouldn't it be funny that all the treasures that came out of Egypt was the exact count of what Shishak carried back? I don't know. But I do know, be not deceived, God's not mocked, that whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. The fact is, if I put one tomato seed in the ground, Hopefully, if I get a tomato plant, I'm going to get many tomatoes. I'm going to get many seeds of those tomatoes. Maybe he just took a lot more than what they walked out of. But that's mine. According to the Bible, modern Bibles mess with that verse. If they would ask, say, can I have your gold? Can I have your necklaces? Can I have you? So we can. And then he would be stealing. He's not stealing. He's looting. That's a very important thing. No Shields that Solomon made, he made in chapter 10, verse 16. And King Rehoboam made instead brazen shields. So, the standard is gold is the highest value of money. And then silver. I don't know what's that. Brazen is a little more further down. The economy has, has taken a big tank. The gold is, can't use silver, it's gone. 
Solomon, the Bible says that he had gold and silver like it was rocks in, in uh, Israel. Well, I mean, that looks like she, Jack, man, he had a field day. He may have taken more than what they came out with, but that's sowing and reaping. That's the law. <clears throat> and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guard, which kept the door of the king's house. So here's the guy who stands at the door. He, he would be the secret service to our president. He stands at that door. He would be like those, those bobbies that you see in England. They stand there at the queen's palace. You know, they don't move, they don't do nothing. They just stand there and they protect the queen. This is what this guy would be right here. Which kept the door of the king's house. And it was so when the king went into the house of the Lord. Did you get that? He's involved in all this religion. But he's into the house of the Lord. We'll look at that in a moment. Notice he goes into the house of the Lord. After it's been stripped, that the guard bear them and brought them back into the guard ship. So when King Rehoboam would leave his door and go to the house of the Lord, this guard would bring those shields, protecting the king. And then when he come back to his house, the guard would put the shields away. Again, it's like we, the, the 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 queen's bodyguard. When they're going to leave the palace, they do their, their, their little thing. You know, they move the guns, and I, I don't know what, what you call that. But there is a session. All right, here comes people. They're leaving. Here comes people. They're coming into the palace. Other than that, they just stand there. And you can taunt them. You, you can do what you want to them. As long as you don't violate them, they're just going to stand there. Here comes the queen. All right, do, do what you got to do. Here comes the queen. Here comes the king. Here comes the prince. That's what's going on here. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And we'll, we'll come back again. We're going to do that tonight. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Civil war. Civil war. That's mean brother against brother. This nation had a civil war. North versus south. They got a north and south war going on here in Israel. There are two kinships. They're tribes of Jacob and they're fighting. All their days. All their days. There was no peace between the north and the south. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And his mother's name was Nama of the Ammonites. And Abijam, his son, reigned in his stead. Now let's go to 2 Chronicles 12. Let's pick up Scripture with Scripture. And we're going to get more information about what we just read. And that's what you need. Study to show thyself approved under God. Oh, I mean, after we have done that, there's more in Chronicles? Yes. So, Second Chronicles 12, 1. And it came to pass when Rehoboam was established the kingdom and had strengthened himself. I mean, everything... Uh, Jeroboam, you know, succeeded north and all that. If he got that down, he settled the kingdom. He forsook the Lord, the law of the Lord, and all Israel with him. So when we read in 1 Kings 14, Judah has sinned. The king is leading the rebellion. And he's only learned that from his father. He's picked up the religion of his father as People today, oh, my father was a Jehovah Witness, I pick up a Jehovah Witness. My father was a Mormon, I pick up a Mormon. My mom was a Catholic, I pick up the Catholic. There it is, picking up your, your, your parents' religion. Found in the pages of the Bible, there's nothing new under the sun. And evolution is not true. Things get worse and worse. So I mean, Rehoboam did even worse than Solomon. Because your children always do the wrong that you do and they hardly ever follow your right. That's life. And it came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed the Lord. So see, Second Chronicles says, this is the reason why. In 1 Kings 14, it gave us the sin. It said God became jealous. And scripture was, scripture, 2 Chronicles says, hey, King Shishak came up, 
scripture is scripture. God is jealous. God is angry. King Shashak, I got a job for you. So it was Israel's fault for Judah. It's Judah's fault for Shishak coming. With 1,200 chariots. Now, Chronicles will tell you, 1,200 chariots. And three score thousand horsemen. So chariots and horsemen. And the people were without number that came with him out of Egypt. So there's just a vast army coming. The Libnans, the Sikkim, Sikkims, Sikkims, and the Ethiopians. That's the first time Ethiopian shows up. And we'll read about it later on in Acts, Acts 8. An Ethiopian that's coming from Jerusalem, carrying the book of Isaiah, that gets saved and believes on the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior. You got a world of nations here. Let's go get Israel. They've sinned against their God. Now, they may not say it like that, but that's what the Bible says. He took defense cities which pertain to Judah and came to Jerusalem. So build your wall. Try to keep the people out. But if you are sinning against God as a nation, those walls ain't going to do you no good. The enemy, if God says, hey, just break down that wall. If God says into the military, there, there's the breach in the wall. All you got to do is work right there. No wall is going to defend you against the anger and jealousy of God. Plain and simple. Then came Shemaniah, the prophet, to Rehoboam. And to the princes of Judah that were gathered together to Jerusalem because of Shishak or Shishak. So here's the enemy. God is jealous. God is angry. God says, hey, prophet, yes, sir, go to the king. And said unto them, thus saith the Lord, you have forsaken me. Here comes the armies. I'm jealous. First Kings 14. Therefore have I also left you in the hand of Shishak. Which Shishak. Anyway, I don't want to say it. I don't think you're going to go to hell because you misput out the guy's name. Give it the best shot. But the prophet says, listen, here comes the, you see all, the, you can't even see it. It's just one big dust cloud. It's one big shadow of people coming. You see that? Yep. You've forsaken me. Yeah. They're in your hands. I'm backing off. I am not going to protect you. In fact, I will be on their side. Let your gods protect you. And this is a scary thing when God will put, when God will take you out of his hands and go in the hands of your enemy. Whereupon the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves. And they said, Look, the Lord is righteous. We deserve what's coming. Yes, sir, Lord. We've sinned. Now, we didn't get that in 1 Kings 14. Extra information. And when the Lord saw that they humbled themselves, the word of the Lord came unto Shemaniah, saying, They have humbled themselves. Therefore, I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance. And my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. And this is a picture of Nineveh when jo Jonah goes in. Forty days, this city shall be overflown. Oh, Lord God, you're God. Lord God, you're righteous. Huh? I'm going to hold off. And the love of God for Israel. They've gotten right. They've repented. And what we read in this verse right here was, had they not repented, Judah would have been destroyed. When David, the children of Judah have sinned, that angel of the Lord's coming, and he's killing people left and right. And he's got that sword, he's heading to Jerusalem. God's like, oh, stop. That's too much. You, David, you better get out there and sacrifice. Some people say God is cruel. No, God is merciful. If God was cruel, there, that would be it. This would be the last of chapter 12 and the last of ever King Rehoboam. And it's not. Nevertheless, they shall be his servants, that they may know my service. And the service of the kingdoms of the country. All right, Sheshach is coming. He's not going to get total victory, but he's going to beat your behind. You're going to get a lashing. You're going to get the rod. 
it's going to hurt. But I'm going to try to teach you a lesson. So Shishak, the king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord. We saw that. The treasures of the king's house. We saw that. He took all. He carried away also the shields of gold which Solomon had made. Again, yeah, we read that. Instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass. Now we saw brazen. Scripture, scripture says brass is brazen and brazen is brass. That's it. And committed them into the hand of the chief of the guard. We read that. That kept the entrance of the king's house. We read that. And the other one in 1 Kings 14 says the door. The door is the entrance and the entrance is the door again. Scripture, scripture. When the king entered in the house of the Lord. Uh oh. Remember we read that in 1 Kings 14? But when we read that in 1 Kings 14, it was like, well, he's he's got this ideology. God is jealous. King Shishak's come, and now he's in the house of the Lord. No, with Scripture, with Scripture, Second Chronicles 12 shows he repented. He got right. King Shishak showed up. Rehoboam now is going back to the Lord's house and serving the Lord. That's the case. He's going back to the house of the Lord, repentant. God, this is where I belong. No more high hills for me. And when the king entered the house of the Lord, the guard came and fetched them, the shields, and brought them again into the guard chamber. That's the shields. And when he humbled himself, he wouldn't get that in 1 Kings 14, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, that he would not destroy him altogether. And he got the beating. He didn't get destroyed. And also all Judah, things went well. How's that? Scripture, scripture. So King Rehoboam strengthened himself again in Jerusalem. He's got a butt lash. He's going to the temple. or the, Yeah, he's going to the temple. He's like, okay, got that mess out of the way. Lord God, I am so sorry. Okay, get back to the business here. Let's do it this time with God and not the other junk. That's what it is. Got the kingdom back. And reign. For Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign. And we'll see the ages, age and every time. He reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem. That's a short reign. Solomon, David, and King Saul all had forty year reigns. And the city which the Lord had chosen out of the tribes of Israel, Jerusalem, to put his name there. And his mother's name was Nama the Ammonites. Now we'll get that information too. It'll tell us who the mothers are. I mean, these kings had, I mean, remember Solomon, a thousand wives. Well, well here's, here's Nama. And you ever wonder if he married, ever married a, a Jewish woman? I mean, all the wives you say, they were the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Ahidites, the Egyptians. And he did evil, because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Reboam, first and last. First, he was he was evil and wicked and all that. The last, he got right. Are they not written in the book of Shemaniah, the prophet? Don't go looking for it. The Holy Spirit did not want us to have that book. Someone out there is probably going looking for Shemaniah's book. Somebody's probably written Shemaniah's book. That book there, um, oh, was it in Chronicles? Jabez. Man, there's only three verses about Jabez, and you got a whole book series. You got a whole message series. You got this whole thing buying junk about Jabez. An idol to seer concerning the genealogy. That may be Chronicles. Maybe. A far maybe, you know. And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. There's that civil war again. That shows back up. Of all that's happened, King Egypt shows up. We got the false gods. We repented and got right with God, but still that's that civil war. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, and Abijah, his son, reigned in his stead. And that's that.